From the heart of the nation's capital and around the country, you're Inside E Street with Mark McCarthy. In their youth, baby boomers wanted to change the world. In their middle age, boomers looked inward to change their personal lives. If change is the constant, will they look outward again in their older years? Will they act on ideals in mass once again? This generation didn't start the civil rights movement, but boomers were the foot soldiers that pushed it mainstream. Many signing on in turn for women's liberation and the gay rights movement. When I'm 65 is our occasional series during this milestone year as the first of 77 million boomers reach age 65. This second episode looks at the drive for rights and freedom and boomers as change agents. In the fight for civil rights, African-American parents sent their baby boom children to open the doors of all white schools. In 1958, Ida Bell Jones put forward the name of her 12-year-old son, Michael, to integrate Stratford Middle School in Arlington County, Virginia. My parents were involved in getting me, uh, putting me on, my name on the list to be enrolled in Stratford. So, and so I just did basically what they told me to do. We yeah. asked you if you wanted. We didn't, yeah, not, well, we I didn't said, okay, make you do it. I mean, uh, we, we said that you had sisters and your brothers that were younger than you. And right. that uh, uh, be better for them. If you went ahead and had this opportunity and went ahead and was one of the, the four, but we didn't actually uh, make you do it. Many Arlington, Virginia residents supported integration, but agitators from other parts of Virginia made their presence known. I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> but everybody was so worried about what was going to happen because some of the people had said what they were going to do if those kids tried to get into school and all. The Supreme Court struck down segregated schools in 1954, but the state of Virginia blocked integration with a policy called massive resistance. The edict would shut down any school system trying to integrate. Meanwhile, some parents and educators in Arlington prepared. There was a methodical challenge through the courts and a group of black children in training for what might face them. We used to go to, uh, to meetings and uh, to meet at churches and meet all, all around, uh, preparing. Four children were handpicked for one main characteristic, a calm temperament. But their parents had to be unflappable as well. Just before the school was integrated, uh, Broadhill, well, you remember Broadhill? He, he was, was a, uh, we had a meeting State at State Senator, uh, he was a congressman. Congressman, yeah. Congressman. He came and he asked, told us that it uh, would be better for us not to uh, let our children, don't let them push our children into this. And he tried to get us to, to not uh, integrate, not to let our children go. But uh, of course that didn't, uh, we told him no, we were going to still go ahead and do it. In January of 1959, the policy of massive resistance was struck down by the Virginia Supreme Court and Arlington was ready. On February 2nd, 1959, Ida Bell Jones sent Michael to his first day at the all-white Stratford Middle School. Couldn't nobody go with the kids. They had to go by themselves. Into to, the school, right. Into, down to the school. But I was so glad when I got a, a phone call saying, they're in, <laughs> they're in. <laughs> I was watching on television and all them police standing and, and they walked through the police line and all. A good thing I didn't have blood pressure because I would have really, right. <laughs> would have really jumped up. <laughs> but uh, I kept saying, well, it's worth it. It's worth it. All I can remember was, was a lot of camera crews, just like this, a lot of camera <laughs> crews around taking pictures like this and a police. lot of bright lights and police and everything like that. Is it, you know, every, all the focus is on you, so, you know, you didn't want to mess up. You know, you didn't want to do anything because so, you didn't want to, you know, uh, uh, picture your name in the Washington Post. <laughs> Kids cause disturbance at school on the first day. <laughs> you know, you go into a class and you're especially only a black kid there and you're new and you come in the middle of the year, everybody said, oh, but everybody said, oh, there they are. And after a while, things cool down and it's back to normal. Michael's classmates, fellow graduates of Washington Lee High School's class of 64, have proud memories about the time. It's hard to believe that that actually happened because it's it's just so foreign to us now. Yeah. But, 
but we we were there right in the on the heart of it at the time when you're just now starting to develop your values your the values that will take you through right to through adulthood i think also our parents had a big role in that as well because I know my parents, and certainly mm -hmm. the parents of everybody here, we were all raised to be colorblind. So mm -hmm. uh, although we were able in a position to kind of carry it out, I think we learned that from our, we were lucky to learn that from our parents. Michael went on to a job in the federal government with the CIA, not surprisingly, in personnel. It's a positive way is it kind of helped me learn to deal with all, all kinds of people, more so than just one, one, uh, just one group of people. Now nearing 65, Michael Jones sees the result of his family's strength and determination. So if you look at high schools now, you know, you don't think anything about, uh, you know, who goes to school. You know, you have all uh, diversity uh, almost every place, especially in close to the cities and the, uh, close to the suburb. Like I told Michael, he, that when they did that, then that opened the way for his, his uh, siblings to be able to, you know, go to Washington Lee and other schools. So it, it worked out, it was worth it. It was trying, but it was worth it. 